We all know shell and tube heat exchangers. But when there is dirty service which needs servicing, cleaning up, that's where the problem lies. What do you have to do then? You have to have these joints. Joints are required because you have to open up. You have to open up for servicing. So when such high pressure vessels have to be opened up for servicing, how do you make these joints? Which is so pressure proof with no leakage. So this is where the gasket comes into the picture. And so does the bolting. You have to bolt it up. Sometimes in high pressure conditions, the bolt can be big in diameter. You can't lift it. You need a crane to lift one single stud. And there are so many studs. Now with that type of exchanger, what happens? Not only the equipment becomes very, very big, because what happens with high temperature, allowable stresses of steel go down drastically. And the pressure being high, the thickness really go up. So what do we do? So the cost of the equipment is going to be very high. And to maintain it is almost impossible. You might as well not have these joints and weld it up and cut the welding for servicing. So this is where the screw plug heat exchanger comes into the picture where the bolts are very tiny but the entire plug is threaded. Although this big diameter plug threading is a big challenge. But when you do that, you really optimize on this. Now, what happens to these types of heat exchangers, which are manufactured by very few companies throughout the world? The plug which is supposed to come out to pull out the bundle doesn't. The plug doesn't come out. What do you do? So this is where your mind has to work. Why does the plug not come out? There is a bell mouthing taking place in the channel and the plug doesn't come out. So what is the solution? So how do you stop bell mouthing? I thought the simplest solution is to see the bell mouthing doesn't take place. So how do you stop bell mouthing? Anybody will tell you it's bell mouthing like that. So don't allow it to take place. Am I right? So what's the remedy? The remedy is not to allow it to take place. So all I did was shrink fit a ring here, which has become so revolutionary. We have supplied more than 250 such exchanges and the plugs come out with total ease. Otherwise, you have to make the entire channel so thick. So now all you have to do is to put a ring here. And how did I think about this? Anybody can think about it. You don't have to be an engineer to think about it. You just have to apply science. What did I do? I just heated a ring to push it in. It was tight to start with, but expanded it by heating and pushed it in to allow it to shrink. So to get induced pressure, it is pre-stressed. It's so easy. So keep studying nature, keep experimenting and applying it. Science is nature. Applied science has to be closest to nature. And nature has a tremendous amount of variables. You cannot confine them to correlations and formulas. So why don't you use your experience? In order to get experience, you have to just go ahead and do something. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. More you do, the more you know. What went right and what went wrong. Around that, you build correlations and formulas. The easiest way to do this is to do the FE analysis. Why should you go to correlations and formulas? Why not just do a FE analysis? For every such thing, in FEA analysis, what is required? Experience to lay out the boundary conditions. So we go back to experience. Keep experimenting till you succeed. Okay.